Tuesday Floss Tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Today is Tuesday, September the 21st. My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. I have lots of uh, cross stitch progress. I did some stitching since the last time I've shared my, my personal crafting with you. So yeah, I've got lots to share. Uh, I wanted to start off today with a little congratulations to um, John and Charlie, John Valentine and Charlie Waters. They are the amazing artists behind these wonderful pet mugs that uh, you've seen me share before. This is my dog Luna and Charlie is the artist and she does the paintings, um, she does the artwork on John's wonderful pottery. Seriously, can't say enough good things about their work. They are um, a pra www.prairiepotter.com. They are in Canada and um, I hear they're getting married. So congratulations, John and Charlie. Very, very, very happy for you. Couldn't be, couldn't happen to a nicer pair of people. So congratulations. And uh, I drink, I drink out of this most days here at the workshop and uh, both Hannah and Matt and Arzu think it's quite funny, especially on the days when Luna comes with me. I have a giveaway to start with today. So this was from a few videos back, the last time I did sort of a floss tube, regular floss tube video. I had two charts up for offer. Uh, the first one was a YouTube giveaway. This is the Just Nan. First Stitches 2000 chart and this does come with all of the beads. The beads are tucked inside here and we had talked about how uh, you know there's some wording in here that you could definitely remove and change and it's still just a beautiful chart. Change the year to whichever year it is that you finish it or just remove that that section entirely. Really lovely. Those pansies are so pretty. Um, okay, so the ran YouTube random comment chooser chose, hang on, I took a photo of the winner. Um, Connie Simonich. Congratulations, Connie Simonich. Your comment was chosen. So if you would please email me, caroline at evertote.com, then I'll pop this in the mail for you. Congratulations. The second chart I had for giveaway, this friends chart from Twisted Threads. And you could literally do any, you could do so much with this chart. You could change the colorway as many times as you wanted. And in fact, the person who won this chart, Melissa Woodhead. Congratulations, Melissa. This chart is making its way to you. And Melissa's comment, I really liked this. She said, I'd love to stitch this for my closest group of friends and change the colors each time to best suit the recipient. And then she also said, thanks for the latest video. I've missed my off the grid Evertote coffee chats. Well, Melissa, the feeling is definitely mutual. So I feel very, very lucky that I had a few extra minutes this morning to sit down and have a chat. So uh, I actually have a new giveaway for today. So this is also going to happen over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. Feel free to join us over there. Uh, and you'll see a photo of this chart up for giveaway. Just leave me a comment and I'll choose the winner the next time I do a floss tube video. This is a Lizzie Kate chart called Santa's Wish List and it's adorable. So it's Santa's Wish List chart number 084. And this is the chart. Hopefully that's focusing. really sweet so if you'd like to win this chart head on over to the Friday off the grid group on Facebook and leave me a comment on the post that has a picture of this chart all right so that takes care of that before I show you my stitching progress I should address just quickly because I know there were a few of you few of you who are wondering about the band-aid on my neck 
it's it's no big deal i had a biopsy done on a mole and this mole is bothering me so ever since the biopsy i've just it's not the same band-aid <laughs> don't worry um i just keep a band-aid on it so as not to um irritate it further so i'm just waiting for the results uh, my doctor says results should take up to three weeks and then as long as everything is normal then she is going to remove it for me so there you go that's the story about the band-aid uh the only other personal thing to to tell you about is about luna and my dog luna of the mug fame luna had uh she's had a few health issues lately she had a uh, bladder infection that has since cleared up and then she had some lumps removed so uh they removed two lumps from her one from under her neck and one from her leg the one in her leg was benign and the one in her neck which was the one they the vet was actually concerned about was actually um uh it was cancerous so they feel that they removed enough they feel that it had good margins for this particular type of growth, but that um, she may be prone to developing a few more of these in the future. So we're keeping a very close eye on her and she is recovering nicely from her surgery, from having that done. So that's a little update on my girl. So my, my furry girl. So let's get to some stitching. Oh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop up, I don't have charts with me, um, so I'm gonna pop in photos of, the, the cover photos of the charts so that you'll know what these will look like when they're done. So the first one I wanna share with you is, this is later Caroline, editing Caroline, coming in to tell you that this is the piece called Red Berries by Modern Folk Embroidery. This is a Christmas chart and I have moved my way over to the right hand side of the stitching and have added in a fair bit more of the vine surrounding the bottom of the bird. And so that's, that's really the entire bottom of, I know the lighting in here is terrible. That's really the entire bottom of the inside of the chart. And there is a gorgeous, um, vine and berries border that surrounds the entire piece. It's so pretty. So I'm stitching this on a 32 count, uh, I believe it's platinum, a Zweigart platinum, 32 count linen with two strands of floss over two and I am using a, a two Leo and Roxy flosses, uh, dark sage and cheeky. This one is really, really fun to stitch because it just, uh, you know, just a few stitches and you see a, a lot of the design come to life. It's really, really pretty. I just love that bird. So that's red berries. And then I put some stitches into my Bart Dunn, the spooky, uh, it's called Black Cats and Spooky Bat. And this was part of the Evertote holiday, uh, holiday, Evertote Halloween collection this year. And I finished the black cats words. So that lettering is done and look at that border. I've done a fair bit more work on the really beautiful border. Just gorgeous stitching. The pattern is so fun and so uh, the fabric that I'm using, this is a, I kept the tag on so I would remember the count. It's a 28 count Lugana in the Cyprium colorway from Picture This Plus. And for this chart, I really, I just think it's perfect. Look at the modeling on this. The coloring of this fabric is really pretty. I think it's awesome for a, a really um, nice Halloween pattern. Not a Halloween stitcher. But this chart, I love this chart. So black cats and spooky bats, and I'm using the the Leo and Roxy floss that Bart charted it for, which are Vampish, Vampish, 
Amethyst, Haystack, and Sage. So this is regular Sage and the red berries is dark sage. So it's a really, it's a really nice palette to put together. So yeah, Bart, thanks for a great chart. I have this available as both, um, you can just get just the PDF or just the PDF and floss, or I still have, I have a couple of bags left. The mediums are all gone, but I have a couple of large flat bags um, and some wedge totes in the shop. This is really a fun stitch. Everything that I'm sharing with you today, I stitched in hand. I have been stitching almost everything in hand because I'm able to keep everything in the same project bag and I drag it around with me all day long. And if I have 10 minutes, I'm pulling something out and I'm stitching on it. So it's been, it's been really fun actually. Stitching in hand, who would have thought? Not me, ever, in a million years did I ever think that I'd be stitching in hand. Oh, these were my flosses for red berries. So there's Cheeky and Dark Sage together. There we go. Okay. So next up, penguins, Ruskins, penguins. Oh, I love this chart. I love stitching this piece so much. And wait till you see. Ta -da! I have a pair of penguins. Look at that. Look at that. so sweet. This fabric is, I'm obsessed with this fabric. This is an XJU Designs fabric. Um, it is a, this particular one is a 28 count linen and it's done in the old linen colorway. That's the name of the colorway. It's called old linen. And Jukas, um, as far as I know, still takes custom requests for linen if she doesn't have any currently in the shop. Her shop is in Hungary. You can find her on Etsy, uh, www.xjudesigns.com. And I will have a link in the drop. I'll have a link in the drop down box below for uh, everything that I have links for. And if I forget to put a link in there and you're still looking for something, just leave me a comment and I'll, and I'll hunt it down. Oh, this chart is so, so fun to stitch. And those penguins are lovely. two strands of floss over two on the 28 count linen and I'm using um, chalk, Leo and Roxy chalkboard and weathered white. So chalkboard and weathered white. I'll talk a little bit more about chalkboard in a few minutes. So those are the called for flosses and yeah, that's Ruskin's penguins. I love like, I can't, I can't, I know exactly what it is about this piece. It's everything. The border is fun to stitch. The penguins are fun to stitch. The little um, starflake motif, starflake, snowflake, the snowflakes that look like stars, looks like, that's what my son used to say. He, he would say, it looks likes, it looks like this. It looks like, they look like stars beautiful and these little hearts are really addictive in the border they're so fun to stitch and look at how pretty they are they're so pretty and the variegation on chalkboard is showing up there nicely yeah really pretty love that okay so my last two those of you who have been hanging out with me for a while, you're going to be very pleased to see these next two up. Now, first up is, uh, let's see, which one do I do first? Because one I've shown fairly recently-ish. I'll show you the, I'll show you the one I haven't showed in a while, shown in a while. This is a piece 
this is a design you can find on the Silk Stitching app. I love this app. This is the creation of Dorothy Kanzi from uh, Historische Stickmuster. Dorothy and her son put together this app and um, it has a few, it has a few designers on it and they sell their charts within the app so the app itself has a little store in it and so you can purchase their designs within the app and then you can you can use your app uh, to stitch the designs and it has highlight functions it can tell you percentage of stitches you've done and so it's it's not it's not the same as pattern keeper because it at the moment it's only a mac uh, ios app but i really really like it and so this is this is a stitch along now with me stitch alongs are never stitch alongs they're start alongs because well it's you're just joining in with me if you're stitching the same thing and chances are very good that you're going to finish it well before i do so i started this start along last year i believe or no was it no it was january 1st i started this of this year january this was my january 1st start 2021 so it hasn't really been that long and this is the hkvh Firlanda sampler and it is stunning so i will have popped in a photo of the finished design here and this was a reproduction sampler done by Uta. Uta Shear, I believe is Uta's last name. And Uta is Dorothy's partner at Historische Stickmuster. Uh, they have a shop in Hamm, Germany. And uh, their online shop is wonderful. And Dorothy and Uta sell uh, really, they sell the Overa silks. They sell fully kitted up charts. If you watch Shiloh X Stitch MD, you'll be well familiar with Historische Stickbooster because um, Shiloh, Shiloh usually has at least one of their projects on the go. And they're just gorgeous designs. All of their charts on the Silk Stitching app from all of their designers are really wonderful. Uh, the app is free, uh, but the, of course the patterns are paid for. They do have a small freebie section in there. There are some freebie charts in there as well that are beautiful okay you ready so here's where i am <laughs> now i know it doesn't look all that different from the last time i shared it but guess what this motif over here is brand new and i did it um i i think i stitched it i started it two nights ago and i i only put in you know not very much work and then i have i have one entire motif completed in just a couple nights of stitching. So that motif there on the end is brand new since the last time I shared it. Now what's really special about this, well special for me, is that I did it in hand. So when I went to bed, I took it with me and I put a few more stitches in. When I got up this morning and I came to work, it was in my bag and I made my coffee and I put a few more stitches in. And before you know it, I had a finished motif because I'm stitching it in hand. It's like magic, you guys. I, I don't know. I'm really thrilled. I don't know why it's not bothering me. Like I, I have tried stitching in hand so many times and I really disliked it. And I don't know. Something has clicked over the past four or five months and I'm loving it. And it's meaning that I'm able to pull out these massive whips. This is a 40 count linen. 40 count r and reproductions linen and it is the color it's winter's brew i'm pretty sure and the floss that i'm using is a silk floss look at that color there look at that it's so pretty when you change the lights you can see the color look at that look at that color so this is a really beautiful silk from mrs sadis who is in spain and her silk she also has a shop on etsy and she um this is the rouge colorway and look at it's so pretty it's so pretty i love it so there you have it i only have one more small motif here and then i'm i've i've completed the entire bottom except for my initials i need to chart my initials and put them in there bottom so yeah it's 
been really, really nice to put another entire motif in that. And now that I have it back out again and I'm working on hand, it, it feels a little bit more accessible. Okay, so last piece I have to share with you today is another big one, another modern folk embroidery. How many times did I say Jacob in my last video? Did anyone count? Because if you were playing a drinking game with me saying Jacob, you would have been in a world of trouble because I must have, when I was editing it, I thought, oh, how embarrassing. But I, I couldn't, I didn't have any time to re-record it. So I thought, well, it is what it is. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> so yes, I'm a big fan of Jacob's. He has become a good friend and I think his charts are fantastic. And so this is the 2018 this was a mystery stitch along back in 2018. And uh, clearly it's no longer a mystery. It is the Four Seasons and I have entirely almost, uh, sorry, entirely almost, almost entirely finished the, what is it? January, February, March? I think this is the March section and I'm almost completed the March section there at the bottom, you can see. Isn't that beautiful? So there's the top corner there. And, oh, it's, again, stitching it in hand. And it is just, it's the most, it's so fun to stitch. So I am, stitching this again. This is a 40 count, another r, &R Reproductions fabric. This is Patriot's Brew. So the difference between Patriot's Brew and Winter Brew, Winter Brew is a little darker, but only by a teeny tiny bit. So the difference between them is, well, I'm not, I'm not Brenda and Laura. I probably would pick either one for either of these colors and I wouldn't be fussy about it. But I know um, our friend Ellen will hold up six different pieces of linen <laughs> that are very similar. And the difference, you know, it matters to some people. To me, I just, I, I stitch it on linen I have in my stash or whatever linen looks best with the color that I have. Beautiful. Okay, what floss am I using? This is a Silk Thread by Vicki Clayton. Um, this is really old stash, super old stash. This was when Vicki was first dyeing floss, silk floss, um, and then she stopped dyeing silk floss for a number of years, and now she started back up again. Uh, so this was my original floss, which is a single ply silk. And then I had a very kind viewer because at the time Jacob had said, oh, I don't think you're gonna have enough floss. I had two spools and he said, I don't think you're gonna have enough floss. And so I was going to alternate the colors, but then I had a viewer, Barbara, who messaged me and she said, I wanna stitch that too, but I have some Zafra Cobalt. That's the colorway. This is called Zafra, Co Zafra Cobalt. And it's Z-A-F-F-R-E, Cobalt is C-O-B-A-L-T. She said, I have some, I'm not going to stitch it with that. I, she, I think Barbara was stitching it in a magenta. I actually, I dug out her old email from way back in, I think it was 2018 or 19 when I started this and when we were communi communicating with each other. And I said, not to worry, I'm, I'm using your silk. I, I so appreciate it and didn't want you to think I'd forgotten about it. And um, Barbara hadn't been working on hers either. So I hope that you've pulled yours out too. She was using a beautiful magenta floss for hers and so I oh I just love this piece I love it love it yeah so anyways uh March is almost done <laughs> March 2018 <laughs> that's okay there's just so much it's all so good right how can you choose you can't choose you just you need to stitch them all okay uh, so that's really it for um, my works in progress that I've kind of been picking away at over the last few weeks. I haven't had a lot of time, but the time, the few 
the few little bits and pieces here and there that I have had has been really, really nice to just sit down and, and stitch in hand because you know you can. You can just sit down and not, uh, not worry about I'm not about to give away my frames. Don't worry. That's actually interesting. Many of you will remember I'm stitching a carriage house samplings piece called Frederica and I'm doing it on a I'm pretty sure it's a 32 count Lugana and so Bart's piece the black cats and spooky bats is a 28 count Lugana and I really enjoy stitching that in hand but the 32 count Lugana that I'm stitching Frederica on I I did not like it. I found that it was uh, the tension, I could not get the tension correct trying to stitch it in hand. As Soon as I put it back on the frame, I was happy again. So that one piece, so that's really interesting because because 40 count linen, working really well. I love it stitching in hand. I find it's the texture of the, the maybe it's the firmness of the, 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 the threads of the linen. Uh, they support the tension of the sewing in hand but the 32 count lugana i found very soft and my needle too easily pierced the the thread of the of the fabric and it it was so soft that the tension just pulled it it was too tight it was not an enjoyable experience so that has gone back on a frame uh lap frame i like the case creations lap frames the wood scroll rod frame system and i also have a uh, my floor frame is a mark ii hearthside craftworks floor frame there in calgary alberta and um very small small um small business small canadian business they make them all by hand they're beautiful uh, and my modern folk embroidery fruit of plenty stitch along is on that so <sighs> so many good things to stitch right so uh, that's it for personal stitching, and I think I've updated you on all the personal stuff that's been, you know, extra, extra bits that have been going on. Shop update last week was wonderful. Thank you. Now, I believe I was saying Huga, and uh, I had a, a Danish, a Danish commenter. I believe you're Danish. Corrected me and said it's an it's a hard H instead of a soft H like Hue. So it's it's just hu huga, is it just huga? H hu huga. <laughs> Anywho, I love it. I'm here for it all. Moonshine cabin, moonshine cabin. There there's still some in the shop. There's still um, the full kits. We still have some left. There's linen left. There's charts left. There's floss left, and all of Jacob's other new charts. Uh, the the Bronte is just so pretty. Love Gaines, beautiful sampler. The AIO 1844 sampler, if you're going to be participating with us in Black Sampler November and you would like to stitch Jacob's sampler, um, it's in the shop. I also brought in a couple of older charts, the uh, uh, True Comfort, is it Real Comfort or True Comfort? It's the, it's the Jane Austen chart and also the home sweet home chart, which is, I, I, I wanna stitch them all. I just wanna stitch them all. So I showed you my whip of Moonshine Cabin last video, and I did mention that Shiloh X Stitch MD uh, is going to be uh, stitching this as kind of a very informal stitch along because it's quite a small chart, and knowing Shiloh, she's gonna have it done in a couple of days because she's so fast. And it is, it's it's not a big chart. Oh, that's another thing. I've been asked to tell you the stitch counts on these charts. So the Moonshine Cabin is 131 stitches wide and 133 stitches high. That's it, so it's not huge. And when I started this, when I started stitching this, my friend Betsy, Betsy Klager, um, found out that she has um, she has a, a, a tumor and so if you if you'd like to hear Betsy's story it's her story to share um, you can check out her YouTube channel uh, Betsy Klager here on YouTube and she started a stitch along 
called the Stupid Tumor Sal. And they were doing the Elizabeth Adelsey chart from Hedgerow Stitching. And I really had to start this so that, well, I just, I had to start this because, and I didn't have enough time to start Elizabeth Adelsey. So I decided that for myself, in honor of my friend Betsy, this, this, when I work on this, this is my stupid tumor cell. So, um, every stitch that I put into my moonshine cabin, I'm thinking good and positive thoughts for Betsy. So yeah, it's, it's such a sweet chart and I think that's it. I'm going to have to go and, uh, make a fresh coffee. I think oh, this one is uh, lukewarm. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I microwave it. I, <laughs> if I had to make fresh coffee every time it went cold, well, that wouldn't be economically feasible because it would, I would be making coffee all day long. My coffee's always cold. I've, I've grown to become accustomed to lukewarm or cold coffee. But um, it horrifies Jacob that I microwave it. So whatever, Jacob, I'm going to go and microwave my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to get to work. I have some sewing to do today. I have a lot of sewing to do today. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Thanks for visiting with me today. I hope that you're well. I hope that you're safe and that you have some crafting to keep you company. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. Happy stitching. <laughs>